Ang ito ay rated SPG. Striktong patnubay at gabay ng magulang ang kailangan. Maaaring may masiselang tema, lengguahe, karahasan, sexual, horror o droga na hindi angkop sa mga bata. Happy Halloween guys. This is a story from Esquire.com. So the story you will be reading and hearing will be credited to Esquire.com. Subscribe to their uh, website and here it is, the top 5 terrifying but true horror stories reported in the news. Some Serially Scary Shit by Matt Miller, October 29, 2015 When you put down a book by Stephen King or get to the credits of a Hitchcock film, you can breathe a sigh or relief and laugh of what just scared the shit out of you. It's fiction, but true horror stories once legitimized legitimized truths from respected news organizations are harder to disconnect from. They happen and could happen to anyone. Suddenly we're not safe. The real world is more terrifying than anything we can make up. Here are the five that continue to creep us out. Death of Elisa Lam Elisa Lam was last seen on January 31, 2013 in the lobby of Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. She was vacationing through the West Coast documenting the trip up on her blog and checking in with her parents every day. On January 31, those calls stopped. Lam had vanished. Soon the police were involved and her parents arrived to help with the, risk, with the search. They had nothing. That February, LAPD released elevator surveillance footage of Lam before her disappearance. The footage saw Lam behaving strangely in the elevator, appearing to talk with invisible people, peering around the corner of the door, crouching in the corner, and opening and closing the door. But what exactly is going on in this video raises more questions than answers. Theories range from psychotic episodes to demonic possession to known asylums just out of the camera's view.
Around that time, hotel guests started reported weird things happening with the Cecil Hotel water supply. As CNN reports, the shower was awful, said Sabina Bo, who spent eight days there during the investigation. When you turn the tap on, the water was coming back first, for two seconds it was going back to normal. The tap water tasted horrible, Bo said. Open close parenthesis, it had a very funny, sweet, disgusting taste. It's a very strange taste, I can barely describe it. But a week, they never complained. We never thought of anything of it, she said. We thought it was just the way it was here. On morning of February 19, a hotel employee climbed to the roof and used a ladder to investigate the hotel's water storage tanks. That's where the authorities found the decomposing naked body of La, whose personal items were found nearby after an autopsy. Her death was labeled, labeled accidental. NBC Los Angeles reported at the time about the strange circumstances in the hotel's past. The tank has a metal latch that can be opened but authorities said access to the roof is secured with an alarm and lock. The single roof occupancy hotel has an unusual history. Night stalker Richard Ramirez, who was found guilty of 14 slayings in the 1980s, lived in the 14th floor for several months in 1985. An international serial killer Jack Anterweger is suspected of murdering three prostitutes during the time he lived there. In 1991, he killed himself in a jail in 1994. In 1962, a female occupant jumped out of the hotel's windows, killing herself and a pedestrian on whom she landed. Exorcism in Indianapolis Last year, the Indianapolis Star published a lengthy report on a family terrorized by three children allegedly possessed by demons. The account of Latoya Amons and her family tells disturbing stories of children climbing up to the walls, getting thrown across rooms, and children threatening doctors in deep unnatural voices. It would seem like a something straight out of a movie, a work of fantasy, except all these accounts were more or less corroborated with nearly 800 pages of official records obtained by the Indianapolis Star and recounted in more than a dozen interviews with police, DCS personnel, psychologists, family members, and a Catholic priest. One of the more chilling sections of the report includes a segment about a possessed nine-year-old girl. According to, according to Washington's original DCS report, an account corroborated with the walker, the nurse, the nine-year-old had a weird grin and walked backward up to the wall to the ceiling. He then flipped over the camp bell landing on his feet. He never let go of his grandmother's hand. Another segment of the piece reads, the 12-year-old would la later tell mental health professionals that she sometimes felt as if she was being choked and held down so she couldn't speak or move. She said she hear a voice she says, he never see her family again and wouldn't leave another 20 minutes. Utah murders suicide. On September of 2014, a Utah teen returned to his home to find his parents and three siblings dead. In a notebook, a to-do to list had been scribbled on the pages. The list looked as if the parents were ready to go on vacation. Items such as feed the pets and find someone to watch the house were written. The Salt Lake Tribune reported it. It appeared to be a murder-suicide, but there was no suicide note. No prior indication that they would do this. No explanation. Police could not figure out why two parents would kill themselves and three of their four children. For a, for, a, uh, for a year, no one knew exactly what happened to the family or what would drive the parents to do something so unthinkable. In January, police released more chilling details in the case. According to the accounts from family members in an investigation by the police, the parents were driven by belief that ap apocalypse was coming and an obsession, obsession with the convicted killer as the Washington Post reported. Friends and family told police that the parents were worried about the evil in the world and wanted to escape a pending apocalypse but most assumed they just wanted to move somewhere off the grid. Investigators also found letters written by Christie Strack to one of the most famous convicted killers, Dan Lafferty, who was convicted in 1984 fatal stabbing of his sister-in-law and her one-year-old daughter.
According to trial testimony, he killed the victims at the order of his brother Ron Lafferty, who claimed to have a revelation from God. The story became a book called Under the Banner of Heaven. Police said Christy Strack became friends with Juan Lafferty and she and her husband even visited him in prison. The Phone Stalker In 2007, ABC News documented a series of cell phone calls to families with terrifying specific death threats. The unidentified callers knew exactly what families were doing and what they were wearing. The family says that the calls come in in all hours of night, threatening to kill their children, their pets, and grandparents. Boys males arrive playing recordings of their private conversation, including one with the local police detective. The caller knows, the family said, that what they were wearing and what they're doing, and after months of investigation, police seem powerless to, to stop them. This went on with the Kui Kenal family for months who reported a caller with a scratchy voice threatening to slit their throats. When the fear crest wash police tried to find the culprit, the calls were the calls were traced back to Kui Kendall's own phones even when they were turned off. <laughs> it got worse. The Kui Kendalls and the two other Fearcrest families told ABC News that they believe the callers are using their cell phones to spy on them. They say the hackers know their every move, where they are, what they're doing, and what they're wearing. The callers have recorded private conversations, the families and police said, including a meeting with a local detective. The Watcher After moving into their $1.3 million dream home, a New Jersey family started receiving creepy death threats from someone who identified themselves as The Watcher. As CBS News reported earlier this year, since moving in, the owner said that they have received numerous letters from the mysterious person. The watcher claimed the home has been subject of my family for decades, and I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming, Castro reported. The new owners have several children and other letters asked, Have they found out what's in the walls yet? And I am pleased to know you're the young blood you have brought to me. The family was forced to flee from their home and later filed a lawsuit against the previous owners.